Have you ever had a need to calculate a different formula on a different row in the same column? I bet you have. For example, you were building a recurring task tracker and you were trying to calculate the next date of the recurring task. And if it's just two or three types of recurrences, it's simple. You just use an if or a switch if formula to discriminate what needs to be calculated depending on the type of the recurrence in the current row. However, if there's too many of these options or each individual formula becomes too complicated and large, a switch if like that just becomes too complicated and unmaintainable. And if each item on your list needs not one but multiple criteria, for example, in this little demo, we are trying to decide whether to include each of these fruits on a shop list. Just imagine writing one big formula to support this. And yes, you could split it down into separate columns and separate calculations to make it more bearable, but this way you will only have more of those unnecessary calculations and still a switch in the end. In a not so distant past, that was the only way to go about it. In some of my early days dogs, this is what I had to do. Luckily, today there is a way to simplify this. I just implemented it the first time when I was working on my dog that distributes patrons dogs. And in today's short episode, I'm gonna share this pro tip for the first time with you. Let's go. Okay, when I said I implemented it for the first time, I meant I implemented it for the first time in Coda. What I'm gonna show you is a well-known software architecture design pattern called strategy. In layman's terms, strategy is when you have collection of different algorithms that can calculate you something, and then you get to choose on the fly which of these to apply. And unlike the switch if approach where to add the new algorithm, you have to edit the big formula and add an option there. With strategies, you keep them all separated, and when you need a new algorithm, you create a new object or in Coda's terms, you create a new row. Now, how is this possible, you'd ask? In Coda, each row calculates the exact same formula. And the answer to that is, remember I told you there will be lots of tricks about canvases. With canvases, it is totally possible to have different formulas in different rows. Let me now show you how I did it in my patron control center doc. All right, here is the list of dogs that I'm giving out to my patrons. I only have six fully set up so far, but it's already too much given that I'm running into dog copying quotas. Now the eligibility to get these dogs is different. Some dogs you will only get if you subscribe for a full year. Some dogs were only available for early birds. Most dogs will be time limited, like you'll get them either if you're already a patron at that moment or if you subscribe within two weeks from the video coming out. And some dogs will be perpetual, like you'll get them regardless of when you become a patron. And perhaps there is gonna be more, so I future proved it. Now, these are not just options on a select list, these are actually our strategies and behind each of these references there is a formula that gets applied to each patron. So let's go and take a look. So here is our table and here is the column with all the canvases. You can open each of them and see that each of them has a formula that calculates whether the current person has access to the current dock. Now you'd be confused which current person and which current dog. You don't see any of these here. That's because a table like that only works in pair with the singleton table that holds those values for the current person and the current dog. And when you look into each individual formula, that's what it references. In our case, there is no dependency on the current dog, but on the current person from the eligibility voter row. And additionally, this formula is only calculating if the eligibility voter row has this strategy enabled. And the list of strategies enabled is read from the current doc. Let's try selecting a different doc for this person and you will see that now the other strategy is in effect. We have this formula calculating whether the current person is eligible to the doc with this strategy. The formula returns us true and that's what we use as our final result when choosing whether to copy this doc for this person or not. And we can try and test it for someone else and we see that this person for example is not eligible to this doc anymore. And of course, I'm not tweaking these options manually. I have yet another singleton table that does this for me. I just select all the people, all the template docs, press run all, and it runs through all people. And you can see how nicely it checks on each doc, on each person. And as it keeps running, it keeps adding rows to the table of individual person, doc, person, doc. Now, why I chose this design with multiple tables and a button to do this? First, in the end of the day, I'm interested in adding rows, so it's only doable with a button, right? That's why even if I had any other way to calculate this matrix of who's eligible to what, I would still have to press a button at some point. Besides, there is no way to take these formula and just duplicate them over each dock. 
or over each person. These calculations can only happen here one set of inputs at a time. Besides, a design like this make it for easy testing, like I can manually change people and change docs without having to run the whole process over and over. Furthermore, what I like to include often is the testing toggle that allows me to see all the results at once. When it's enabled, I'm just including all rows from the table. Here is one gotcha that you need to keep in mind though. These formulas here, they return you booleans, yet true and false values. However, since this whole thing is a canvas, if you just try to read the value directly, it's gonna give you text and these will not calculate properly. So you need to actually compare it to the text true. And then if you're operating on multiple voters at a time, the formula for your result, depending on the operation that you're applying, either it's any of the strategies return true or all of the strategies have to be true, will be like this, any current value or all current value. This basically is the same as checking if all values are true, but I hope you watched that episode. All right, this trick did what I wanted it to do. However, I pondered if I could do it without the buttons and have it recalculate as live formulas. And it turns out we can, we just need to calculate that strategy formula for multiple inputs at once. Let's take another look at the fruits demo. See how the moment when we increase the price on apples it gets taken off the list. Let's take a look at the criteria and see how they are done. Now this looks different, let's take it apart. First, for each criteria we collect all the fruits that it applies to through the reverse lookup. Next, we adjust our formulas. Instead of calculating it just for one fruit, it goes over each of these fruits in this row in the order and applies our strategy for each fruit, depending on this this fruit's data and the context of the rest of the doc. Like in this example, we are returning true if this fruit's juiciness matches the maximum juiciness across all the fruit. Next, we do the same that we did before. Since this is a text value, we need to actually turn this into a list of Boolean values. So the formula is take the canvas and turn it to text. That's important because without it, Coda will not treat that list of values as something you can split. We will talk about this eventually in the video about rich text. Then after you convert it to text, you split it by a comma and a white space. And now for each of the resulting substrings, you're comparing that to our text value true. And we do this by not running for each on the fruit, but creating a sequence from one to the number of fruits we have so that we have our indices one, two, three, four. And then for each of those indices, create a pair of the nth fruit and the corresponding nth formula result so that it takes first fruit and first result, second fruit, second result, and so on. Now when we have that, we can look up these results from our voters. For each of the applicable voters, take the list of result pairs, find the pair where the first element is the current fruit. This will return us a list with just one element. Unwrap the list, take the first element from that list. This whole thing returns us one pair. And from that resulting pair, take the last element, which is our Boolean value. And for those multiple voter results, apply the operator. So it's again, either any should be true or all of them should be true. And I'm doing the similar thing for chores, only that I'm not dealing with booleans here, but with dates. And instead of checking against true, we are taking each value and converting it to date. And if we had multiple voters here, like multiple recurrence rules for each task, we would probably take the minimum date, which would be our closest date. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is performance. Obviously, the button-based approach is a separate thing because it doesn't recalculate automatically. You might have super complicated strategies, but only press that button once in a month. The question is more about the big switchy formula versus these live formula strategies. And the answer is gonna be as usual, it depends. I haven't measured this yet, but my intuition tells me that the big switchy formula would almost always win, despite the inflated dependency graph. That's because in the end it's just one formula and the strategy approach requires creating these lists, unwrapping these lists, turning things to text and then back to values, and a lot of filtering. And all of that would be more taxing on performance if your tables grow very big. But for what it's worth, you don't use this approach for performance. That's not the goal here. The goal that strategies solve is to take something very big and complicated and tangled and break it down into smaller manageable pieces. And you use it not because you want to speed things up, but because you want to take these criteria and solve them one formula at a time. 
That's been all for today's trick. This dog is gonna be given out to the large fries patrons and I've already told you the rules. To get it you either have to be a patron already or join my Patreon within the next two weeks from the date of me publishing this video. And this control center dog will take care of it being copied for you. Thank you for bearing with me till the end of this very pro tip. Even if you choose not to use it, I hope that it inspired you to learn more about Coda. And to do so, you know what to do. Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, watch all the other videos, join my Patreon, and I see you in the next one. Cheers. Fun fact I just discovered is that this resource was actually made by a fellow Ukrainian. Can you believe that? The world is a small place indeed.